Everyone's so mopey. Well, Toby's not mopey. Hey, Tobes. Always a happy Toby, aren't you, Toby? What's... <laughs> really? I can't pet you? Not unless I have treats, huh? But I, I get a kiss? Nope, just a sniff. It's a beautiful day. I'm not... By most people's standards, it's been raining and storming all day, but it's like 72 and now it's all sticky and humid outside. I want to go outside and play with the plants, but that's not really going to work when everything's sopping wet. Maybe tomorrow. Should be able to keep this vlog going for a few days, I think. I don't know, my voice just started to go out. Hope I didn't just jinx myself. But there's always plenty to do out here in the grow space. Oh, and hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's it been doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great going around checking on the plants needed to do this sometime this week. May as well do it now. Have a quick look, see what's happening. I'm doing my spider mite check. The predator mites yeah, kind of doing their thing, sort of. I did start to see some webbing in here on the Sarion, which I'd mentioned was one that had had a big spider mite problem. It seemed to have gone away with the predator mites, but it started to come back. There was some webbing, there were mites in there. So I, I hit my breaking point and I just started blasting and spraying. Can only take so much, right? I mean, released over a hundred thousand mites in here at this point, like something's gotta give. Do a water check. I had some water down here in that basin, but it's time to go ahead and pull the plug on this so it can drain out, move out into the other reservoir because I don't want these to soak for too terribly long. They were really thirsty. Now that it's kind of warming up, well, it's definitely warming up outside, just not at a point where I would say it's going to stay consistently warm. I hope that it will though, we will see. It's like supposed to be in the 60s and 70s, maybe one cool night coming up. Typically we're in the 40s, 50s, 30s, lows in the 20s and teens this time of year. That was the most complicated way to have saying we range from the teens to the 70s this time of year. Didn't have to go through all that, did I? Approaching more mild weather outside, which should mean that the humidity will stay more stable in here, but we will see. The only reason I'm bringing that up is because I've wondered if maybe the fluctuating humidity has been what's been causing problems with the predator mites. It's one of the reasons I've been using the Californicus type predator mites along with the mixed blends that there's a little bit of everything in here to get the job done. And it, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. Like I said, webbing showed back up on that Sarion over there. There was some webbing up here on the freckles that I took care of and I'm not seeing it anymore. It looks like it's not that, oh. Hey, what's going on? What's your problem? Why aren't you on? Cheap ass shop lights never living up to their full potential. You never, some days it works, some days it doesn't. I remember when I set this up over here, that particular light wasn't working. And then it just randomly started working. So I was like, okay, you can stay. You're gonna go ahead and work, but that's not what's going on anymore. I'm gonna have to change that out. Don't know if I'll be able to do that right now, but maybe. Uh, the humidity, <laughs> back on point. Been pretty good, getting more stable. I try and keep the humidity above 55% out here. Although typically I aim, I, I have my humidistat set to 65%, but if it's really, really cold outside, then the heater up there has to run full blast constantly. And that dries the air out, even with the humidifier that's down in here. But you can see when the humidifier is not on, it means they're at 65% right now. Humidistat says 84%. It's nice and sticky in here, which is what I would hope for since it's raining outside. I think I'm gonna give the predator bites just one more go. I know I keep saying that and I keep saying, this is it, I'm done, I'm not gonna keep trying. But the thing is, I don't wanna just spray chemicals on top of everything out here when I've been, I've spent a lot of money on these things and they're living creatures. I don't wanna just add them out here and then kill them. Because anything I use to kill the spider mites, it's gonna kill the predator mites too. And I have the ladybugs and the mealybug destroyer ladybugs out here as well, which were not cheap. And it's, it's not just a money thing, they're living things. And I don't now get into the debate of going between which lives to protect by one over the other. I'm not gonna do all that. I want the pests in my plants, they destroy the plants. That's why it's selfish. I'm not gonna try and rationalize it. Throwing that out there because usually I get a little bit of kickback if I talk about stuff like that. I realize the irony and hypocrisy doesn't all add up, but that's the way it goes. So in part of keeping the humidity up, I need to uh, do some plumbing stuff in here. I have some parts coming in the mail. Who knows when they'll be here. I uh, moved a few plants around that were up here on this table. There is a ginger up there that the air was just too dry to have the ginger up there. So I went ahead and I moved it down to the ground where it's going to get some more moisture. 
And uh, I moved the Prince of Orange, philodendron up there, which needs to be chopped and repotted. It's always done well up here on this table, and it actually it's already shooting up a new leaf in like week, week and a half that I've had it sitting there. So that's a good sign. The whole point though is when I did that, I spilt a whole bunch of dirt and leaves down into the, yeah, you see all that? It's gotten kind of gross. I don't have the same filtration running on this as I used to because I don't have the fish in here anymore. So it's just, it was just something that's taking up space and using electricity. I tried and save all my wattage, all my voltage, all my amps for the grow lights. So the downside to that is it does mean chances are from now on a couple times a year, or at least during the growing season or the non-growing, the indoor growing season, I will need to get in here and clean this out manually. I have a filter pad that's in there, but it, you know, it only does so much. There's a carbon filter down in there. That's really just to help remove some impurities from the water since it goes through humidifier. I want to keep that, that, uh, the, but it's called the mist that vaporized water. I want to have that a little bit more clean. Going up into the air and you're breathing it and have the heater and everything out here. I've noticed that if the, I go too long without, I was going to say doing a water change, but if there's a spell where I don't water the plants very often, then uh, the water sits in here longer because that's what I used to water the plants. And that's when I start to get the buildup inside the heater from the stuff that comes out of the humidifier goes up to the heater and there's just like a white powder that forms on things. It's important for the water to stay fairly clean. You tell I'm feeling talkative today. Whole point there. I need to drain the pond down. I hate to drain it down when it has this much water in it already, but everything out here is fairly freshly watered because the humidity is higher. I didn't have to use as much to water the plants this time. So that's just... Well, it is what it is. This should be a pretty good time to do something like this. I'm trying to figure out where I'm gonna run the hose out to do this. It's not a project I can do when it's really cold outside because there'd be a couple hundred gallons of. I was thinking about maybe moving the croton outside just for tonight and part of tomorrow to give it a little vacation outdoors, but again, it has those predator mites on it, which should stay on the plant, but there's gonna be fluctuating temperatures and stuff. I don't wanna wash them off, even though I see webbing right now. The spider mites are back on this thing already. It's got the little bags on it. I've dumped an entire canister of 25,000 California spider mites on this thing. It's, it's not working. I think these predator mites are just a bunch of no good lazy bags taking my money, not doing any work. No, it's not really, I can't really blame the bugs. Like I said, I'm guessing maybe that fluctuating humidity could have something to do with it, even though I don't let the humidity ever drop that low. Maybe the inconsistency has something to do with them not working to their full potential. I don't know. I'm gonna get this drained down and we'll cut back to when I get in there and clean it because that's that'll be more entertaining. Get to listen to me gripe and moan about how disgusting it is. And actually, I don't think it's gonna be that bad. I mean, it's icky and mucky, but it's just dirt. So it shouldn't be that bad. Mostly excited to see crystal clear water in here again. The tannins are good for the plants. We don't need to, I don't need to go over all that. At some point, I'll be coming back. This won't have any water in it. I'm guessing that that will be tomorrow because it's going to take a long time to drain this down and maybe get some work done outside. The nurseries are starting to open back up. I want to go buy plants so bad. Not how, well, I do want to get tropicals, but it really shouldn't. Doesn't make sense right now, but maybe. Oh, we'll see what's going to happen. I'm having second thoughts. No surprise there, right? Not really second thoughts as much as as I walked around here to get to the access to drain it. I started realizing some things and I was like, eh, I might need to make a few changes out here. First thing I noticed was, hey, look, another shop lights out. Oh, and over here, check it out. Another shop lights out. So I'm gonna have to figure something out with those. I have the variegated sea hibiscus over here. It's, I don't know how to, get it to you all on camera, but it's it's back there and it's just looking like absolute garbage, which I'm not surprised by that lights out. I don't know how long that's even been out. And this croton is taking up a lot of space, making it hard to get water over here to the mule palms. This is, I was just cleaning up. That's just some stuff from a dormant ginger. Cause when I water, I stand right there and I just aim the water from right there around to the larger plants. It doesn't really make sense to try and get that rigid hose wrapped around everything. It's hard to get it past the croton. I have the croton up here for the lighting, but what I'm thinking is maybe I should put a more intense grow light up there. And uh, I don't think there's a stud for me to anchor into. I'm pretty sure well, there is somewhere. I know there's studs up there, but 
probably won't be directly above the croton, but I think that if I can still get it down with any light above it would be better than nothing. And then that's going to free up the table and I can move that sea hibiscus that's over here to the table and uh, run a, a wicking cord into the water because that thing, it's a water hog. And that's probably another reason it's not looking so great because it hasn't been that easy to get water over to that plant either. I had talked about in uh, a lot of more recent videos over the last several weeks about how there's a lot of rearranging that I've wanted to do out here, but I haven't been doing it because of the spider mite situation. I wanted to keep things as they are because I don't want to just take a problem that might be on one side of the growth space and move it over here to another. But at the same time, the plants need light and I need to be able to water them. And we're going on like month five now of this crap. I mean, it's just it's time to move on. I'm not going to be doing the full blown rearranging like I had thought about or would like to do but maybe just move a few things around that'll make more sense. Still got a ways to go till the plants can go back outside. It's only February. They really aren't safe. Most of them aren't safe to go out until May. You gotta make sure that they're all being taken care of properly. The pindu palm, look at that. New growth. I wasn't expecting that at all because I didn't do much of a treatment with this. I saw that it had the crown rot. I talked about this in a video where I was like, here's what I do when I have crown rot. And I also said in that video that this particular Butia, it's just sickly. This happens like once a year with it. I've grown many butias. This has not been an issue with any of the other ones I've ever grown. All the other ones I've grown have ended up dying from cold damage outdoors. Like you know, every five years or so, we'll have a really hard freeze that even the heat cables and things can't save them from. Mostly when there's a power outage, that is, because obviously the electricity's off. But even potted ones have not given me this much trouble. So I'm just like, I was just going to get rid of it. I just held on to it to film the video. And I was like, I'm just going to throw this away and I can get a new one because when they're this big, they don't, they don't cost very much. They're not that hard to come by, but here it is putting out some growth. I'm thinking it's gonna grow in the ground this spring because it's that I'm tired of messing with it. I'll put it in a sheltered spot. And if it somehow miraculously decides it wants to survive a winter with minimal protection, so I'm not gonna do much to protect it, then that would be great. I was gonna say, what are your thoughts? But y'all can't tell me until I've already had to make up my mind. Yeah, I think if I were to move the croton back down onto the ground on top of some milk crates, I'd wanna make sure there's airflow underneath the pot. Don't want to get waterlogged sitting on that the styrofoam floor and what's out here, it has a give to it. The pots can sink into it and it affects the drainage. So yeah, maybe that'll be the way to go. And then I can move the sea hibiscus over here. It's probably gonna need a major cutback. I might cut everything off of it and just leave it as a trunk and a couple branches. With the brighter lighting, that should, that should be okay. Okay, now going to drain this down. And that was, I picked up and interrupted myself, everything I was doing. Because once the water is a plug slowly out of there, it's just gonna be all wet over there and I won't be able to film or really talk much. It's gonna be loud. So I don't know, I'm gonna spend some time and think about that, see what happens. Okay, all right, there we go. So now pond is draining down at full capacity. Audio is probably kind of wonky right now. That's probably gonna take a pretty long time and that's fine. It'll give me time to figure out what I'm gonna do with the lighting and the plants. I'm gonna be able to get a ladder over here for the lights. The croton may be going outside tomorrow, no matter what, it's gonna be in my way. I may have to get out of here, make some room so I can get a ladder in here and work on these lights. Testing, audio, you there? Gosh, dang it, I just did so much talking and the mic wasn't on. Whatever, here's a rundown. I got a grow light hung up here, just more for proof of concept. This isn't how I'd wanna leave it with the cord dangling all the way to the ground and everything. This is a 100 watt full spectrum LED grow light panel. A definite upgrade from the shop lights that are over here from Sam's Club. I wanna make sure that they're into a stud. They aren't super heavy, but they're heavy enough. I want them into a stud. I could create some kind of brace situation up here so I could have the light more centered directly above the plants, but I don't want to. It takes a lot of time, which I don't have much of right now. It would make sense just to get it up there, see how that's even going to work if I like the lighting. The problem with it being at an angle like this, grow lights really should be directly above the plants. When they're at an angle that's going to tell the oxen and the plant to go, hey, let's go over here. You don't really want that, but that just means the plants will need to be rotated every now and then, which isn't that big of a deal, not when it's temporary. I think I can get another light hung up over here. And that one will be more centered with this spot as it is. But here's the problem. Wasn't anticipating hanging up four grow lights today, right? I, I knew that I had two, but the other two, I wasn't prepared. So I don't, I don't know what to do about that. I guess I'll just 
got online and order a couple more. I'll probably go with something more powerful to put up in this corner over here. Also, I just remember that I'm pretty sure that that light's been out for a while. And those plants over there are doing okay with the exception of that sea hibiscus. I think just needs to get to a spot where I can water it more frequently. That would be my guess anyways as to what's going on with that one. So really you probably would be okay with just getting one more panel to put up over in that spot. And I have to go through every time I do something like this, I have to count all the bulbs that are up here and calculate the uh, amps to make sure I'm not going to blow any fuses or anything like that. There has to be room for them, otherwise it's a fire hazard and they'll be tripping all the time. That's just a pain. Don't feel like dealing with any of... Oh my gosh, what is this? I panicked for a moment when I saw the discoloration on the foliage of the oleander here because it looked like thrip damage. Then I remember that this thing took a frost. The new growth looks totally fine. No spotting on there, so I can, I can put the panic down. It just thrips. Wouldn't that just be the... Shouldn't even be saying it. Wrong with me. Shouldn't even be talking about thrips. They'll just show up. End up jinxing the situation out here. There's enough to deal with. Don't need to throw that on top of everything else. Hey, a new leaf opened up on the elbow back here. That's not... Th this is the new leaf right there. <laughs> Zoomed in on the wrong one. Seems to be happy. That plant is growing very, very well. I need to repot a few things that are over here. The Jacqueline Alocasia, that it definitely needs a new pot. And then there is a Longiloba right here that could probably use an upgrade. Some of the other ones just need to be topped off because the water's been splashed out of them over time just from, you know, heavy watering. Blows the soil right out of the containers. Sump pump is trucking along, but it's taking its sweet time. There's no bottom drain in this, so to get all the water out, I have to use a sump pump. I use the high velocity pump to get most of it out. And then I throw the sump pump in there to pump out the last few inches, but it is slow. It's a sump pump that's made for aquariums, which only really matters when it comes to things like the type of impeller or gaskets really that are used. There's nothing that's gonna leach into the aquariums. If y'all heard that, I almost just fell. It's more something I have to concern myself with for the marine aquariums. So the croton, since I don't think I'm gonna be able to, well, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm definitely not going to, I said I don't think. Can't put up a new light there since I don't have it. I really need to get the other ones put up over there and this is doing fine for now. I'm just going to uh, give it a scoot and just pull it back a little bit. That's probably a completely, totally and useless, worthless camera angle, but you get the picture. I'm scooting a pot and just had it rain vermiculite down on top of me from the predator mite stuff that's up there. And that'll open up a spot over here for the uh, hibiscus. I might need both of my hands for this. I'm not sure. Give this a try. It's not very heavy. It's just dry. I should probably prune this before I put it over there because well, actually it's not looking as bad as I thought it was, but there's some stuff that needs to come off of there. May as well do it while I'm thinking about it. The way it was tucked in over there, it looked like it was in much worse shape than it actually is, but this isn't bad at all. Lots of cobwebs in there, but overall not not too bad. Can I? Hmm. Hmm. How am I going to do this? Went into this under the assumption that it will just fit right in there, but I really didn't think about it. And now see, here's what I didn't want to happen. Now I'm rubbing a plant that doesn't have spider mites against the plant that does have spider mites. Most of the spider mites are up high though. What do you do though? The plant needs more light. It needs, it needs easier access to water. So it's just, it's just the way it has to be, I suppose. Move a few things around. Make some room there. Should be able to slide the tree over in here. I should probably orientate it so that its growth is actually sticking out here and not inside the areca palm. I'm just rubbing all the plants together. I went from going, hey, I don't want to contaminate plant to plant to like, let's just rub them all together. Not smart. This palm frond, nothing wrong with it, but it's in my way and it's bugging me. This one's got brown on it. It needs to go. That's better, I suppose. I think it'll be happier right there. It's going to get a lot more light when I can get the grow light hung up right there. Oh, I, I had mentioned moving the croton outside today. It's the, I never said it's the next day. The forecast, it's not warm enough. It's going to warm back up, but I don't want to take the risk. I suppose this works out better than I thought it was going to. But once I can move the croton, I can get a ladder in here, handle the light that I don't even have yet. I'm going to order that in just a moment. Probably blast it off with water again and just say screw it with the predator mites that are on that one and start over. Actually, I will probably go chemical on this one. I'll get it outside, spray it down, use a chemical on there very, very heavily, cover it top and bottom, all the stems, everything, apply a systemic, water that in, and then not this next batch of predator mites that comes in, but the one after that. So it'll be a total of two to three weeks that will pass. 
I'll put them back on there. Because there are some chemicals that are okay to use with the predator mites, but you need some leeway in between when you use the chemical and when you introduce the predator mites. So that's what's going to happen with that one because it's just, it's not looking great. I can see some webbing up there. And overall, I think it'll be better for the plant in general to have it down lower where it's more accessible since I'm having these problems with it so that I can actually see up into the top growth of the plant. I can't really see it that well from down here. Y'all can't tell. But there's a 14 foot ceiling in here and there's, I don't know, probably two feet of clearance above there. So this thing's like 12 feet up there in the air. So getting it off of that table down onto the ground, well, it'll be on top of a couple milk crates. Better airflow for better drainage, oxygen around the roots, all that stuff. It'll have fresh lighting above it keeping it in a higher active growth, hopefully bring up the immunity of the plant. Also going to try and introduce some uh, earthworm castings and potentially some other things to help bring up the resistance in the plant, build its immunity up so that the bugs in general won't be able to damage it as much. And they're not, shockingly, not doing a ton of damage, but I see the webbing, I know it's there. It's gotta go, it's out of reach. The other plants where the webbing's showing up, I've just been spraying it off and trying to not cover a broad area so I'm not doing a lot of damage to the predator mites with this one. I don't think that's an option, it's too big. So there, there we go, there's the update. Back to the hibiscus. I don't, uh, what am I gonna do with this one? Need to get out the self-watering stuff and set up a rig of some kind for that hibiscus back there. This is pretty simple stuff. I'm just gonna use bamboo skewers and take some of this wicking cord, which I imagine is probably, yep, all in a knot. I'm gonna come in and make a small cut on the very tip. This is better to do, by the way, if you soak these first, use a bamboo skewer or a chopstick. If you soak them first, they're less likely to split all the way up, but I like to have a groove here in the middle. It's not going to want to focus because it's really small. It's a little chip in the wood there, just something that I can work the end of the cord into, and that will work as a spike. And wrap the wicking cord around that skewer. I don't, I started to say, call it something else. Uh, skewer or chopstick, and then it can just be stabbed down into the soil. Pete that a few times, I'm thinking it will probably need three or four of these for even moisture, and that's all there is to it. Well, no, that's not all there is to it. The other end of the rope that comes off of the cord here. I'll get tied to a rock which will hold it, weight it down into the water, and then it'll just wick the moisture up. This is something everybody can do. You don't need to have a gigantic pond sitting around your garage to do something like this. Making a cut in the end of the wood to hold the rope in place, wrapping it around, tying it to a weight, and then having some sort of vessel that holds water next to the container, which is just what you would drop that into. Could drop the other end of the rope into a bucket of water, into a vase, maybe even into a fish tank. I don't really see why not. The only thing to know, oh crap, that's not going to be enough. Didn't know that that was a short end there. Only thing to note there, we'll try that again, would be that if there's too much distance to go between where this is stuck into the soil of the plant and whatever container you have holding the water, that that can affect how much moisture is getting wicked up into the container. So if you have a really long stretch of it, like I'd say over maybe three or four feet, then you can go to the hardware store and find some clear vinyl tubing. Just take a little piece of the cotton cord with you and find some that's just a smidge larger than this tubing here. Just pop one end of the cord into that tube and that will prevent the wicking from stopping from drying out in between the container and whatever you have holding the water. I probably should have mentioned all this is, this material here, it's just cotton string, cotton cord. Nothing fancy, you can usually find it on Amazon. You can type in self wicking cord, it'll show up, cotton wicking cord, you'll be able to find it. The downside to doing it this way with the skewer or chopstick is that you no longer have that nice blunt end to use to stab into the soil. So if you're working with a really compact soil, this may not work as well. And it really, it's better if possible to run this up from the bottom of the container into some drainage holes. I just don't really see how that's gonna work out. Easier to do on smaller containers, larger containers like that one. I don't really know how that would work out. I think there might be too much weight that will push down on the cord in between the container and the water. I don't know, we will see. A nice long rock here to tie these ends around. The brick would work fine too. Anything that will hold it down, make sure that it sinks into the water. That was just, that was just for demonstrative purpose, demonstrative purposes, because that should really do this part after stick the skewers into the soil, right? Because there's gonna be varying lengths 
I guess there aren't always going to be, but there are for me because I didn't cut the cords evenly. Having some moisture to start with in the soil, also a good idea because it's going to make those skewers go in more easily when they don't have a blunt end. They don't really have a reason to poke into the soil. And if need be, if the skewers won't go down, take the cord with them, then you can pre-drill the hole with something that's just a little bit larger than whatever skewers being used. And that will work just fine too. You need to make sure to poke the soil back around it when you put it in there. Otherwise it's not going to have anything to wick into, right? Sometimes you might have to use your finger to help push the cord down with it. If you have too much slack, not hard to do. It'll all go down there. General rule of thumb is to try and have those skewers down about 50% of the height of the pot. As long as you can get it down a few inches halfway through, should be good. Now just tie the rest of these onto that rock. Thinking this should make for a happier plant because the issue I've had this entire time has just been keeping it hydrated. Otherwise it's not looking too bad. Oh, and by the way, masonry brick that has the holes in it, a lot easier to tie the rope to. With a rock, you know, that could slide off. These things get moist over time and can move around with those bricks. You have the holes you can go through. There we go. Got the rock in, got the cord over there into the hibiscus. Okay, so that's done. Still need to water the plant in, get some even moisture. It's going to take a decent amount of time for the moisture to wick its way up there to the plant. This isn't a permanent solution to watering the plant. Since this hibiscus is just a very thirsty type of plant, I'm not considering this the end of me needing to water it by hand. Just to get it through the in-betweens of when I am watering by hand, because it seems like the majority of the plants in here can be watered about once a week. This one, uh, I think it would be happier more often than that. Now, last winter, when I didn't have the fancy heater out here, this barely got any water ever. Maybe two or three waterings during the time when I didn't have the heater because the heater got installed, I want to say late December or late January, something like that. And even after that, it still didn't need a ton of water. I suppose it's just put on some more size and it's a more thirsty plant. Don't know exactly what's changed other than I did repot it and that the mix could have something to do with it. But I just used an Espoma blend with some land and sea compost mixed into it, which is I'm pretty sure what it was in before. But always a rhyme or reason behind these things. Okay, that's done. I know it doesn't seem like much, but it makes me feel good to have that done. I don't know what's going on with the sump pump. It usually takes a long time, not this long. I checked it, it's not clogged up. So I don't know, we don't need to worry about that. Hopefully in the next video, the water will be nice and sparkly and there won't be junk all over the bottom, but who knows? Main point there is just to get the water change done so that there's less mineral in there. This gets refilled with reverse osmosis water, so that's really is good enough, but I would like to get that stuff out so that it doesn't build up as quickly if I'm not going to be watering as often. This time of year, we're moving into longer day lengths. I'm bumping the heat up on the heater, so I'll actually be watering more frequently. So perhaps that didn't even matter. I don't know, but I think it needed to be done. It just, there was a slight odor. I tested the water. The TDS was getting high. It was bouncing around on my meter between like 95 and 100 and something. And I like to keep the TDS in here below 50 when possible. If it sits around for too long before getting used, then that builds up. And then you have all that stuff down there in the bottom that gets stirred up. And that brings the TDS up as well. When the TDS is up really high, I have more trouble getting the pH balanced in there because there's more stuff breaking down inside the water. Oof, there's a whole bunch of information nobody asked for. You're welcome. All right, well, I can't control the weather. I would have liked to have gone outside, gotten the croton out there and done all the stuff I talked about now instead of later, but it is what it is. It's February. I'm surprised we've even been having the nice weather that we've been having, so whatever. I do feel like, even though it doesn't seem like it, I got some things done that were big on my list, even though it was mostly just moving plants around, adding some wicking cord messing with grow lights up there. On the note of the grow lights, I went to order on my phone in between takes here to get a new LED to put over the Croton as discussed. And the next model up with this LED light that would be enough wattage for what I would want here uses the chip LEDs. And the problem with the chips, if you don't know what I'm talking about, they're just little rectangles that don't put out very much light. Companies will put tons of them into a fixture and say, look at how bright and efficient it is. And it's like, okay, if you're just trying to light up the space, sure. But a lens is important, very important when it comes to the throw of the light. So the next model up with that one that's more wattage and more powerful actually needs to be closer to the plants and doesn't cover as wide of an area. 
See, so those over there have little like donut ring lenses around the LEDs that helps push the light further. Has a much higher PAR rating is what I'm going for here, what I'm trying to talk about. PAR rating when it comes to grow lights, it's not discussed anywhere near as much as it should be. If you've ever been in the coral hobby, then you know what I'm talking about. It is important because it is what you need to know as far as the intensity of the light that you need and how close the light needs to be to the plant. So for this spot, the model up from those, not going to work. I need an LED full spectrum light fixture to go right here that does a wide angle and can be at least four feet from the plant. I'll be doing some research over the weekend and uh, find something to put over here. I need a one and done situation. So a more powerful LED to go sort of in this corner right here. And then maybe one of the other ones like I have over there to put right here. So the croton will get scooped back. I'll do something with that pot. And I'm thinking I'll bring the Bismarckia palm up here and see how it does. Cause right now it's just kind of hanging out in the darker area over there. It's probably not happy. So if anybody has any suggestions on grow lights, comment down below, let me know. I'll do some reading on them. There are several brands that I like, but I want to dig in a little bit further into the companies before I talk about them. Cause a lot of them are made in places that I don't, I don't want to go into all that. It gets political, uh, just not going to go there. If you have recommendations, let me know. We'll talk more about that next week after I've done a little bit more digging behind some of the companies that I've used before and that I'm more aware of. And just comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing.